Hello everyone, it's Kaini here. Today we are going to be sewing the basic trousers block. For this you're going to need contrasting thread, a 7 to 8 inch zipper, you're going to need the pattern which is downloadable from the link below. You're also going to need about 3 yards of plain non-stretch fabric. Remember the pattern is a digital pattern, you can assemble it after printing and the instructions are linked below. So let's get sewing. Well, first we are starting with the front piece, which is two pieces. So you're going to fold your fabric in two layers. Um, the first thing I would like you to do is align your trouser with the grain line. Make sure it's straight. And once you do that, you can go ahead and put your seam allowance. I am using half an inch or one centimeters all round. You can go as much as an inch or two centimeters on the sides if you want to give yourself enough room for corrections. I'm also adding half an inch or one centimeter at the waist and the hemline. We're simply going to stay stitch. Remember to transfer your darts and all your notches to the stitching line. Now I'm just pinning down my layers before I cut out so that nothing moves. Next, I'm doing the back. Remember, once again, align the grain line with the selvage of your fabric. Once everything is pinned down, I can go ahead to cut. Now at the hem, because the leg is tapered, I'm drawing my seam allowance because I'm going to fold the seam allowance at the back. Just fold it down before you cut so that it has the right shape like that. Fold it down to the back and cut. This will make sure that when you're hemming your trousers, you have enough hemming room, okay? I'm doing a similar thing at the waistline. You draw in your seam allowance, fold it under and cut. Okay, remember to clip your notches and draw in your darts.
starting with the crotch seams we're just going to sew down the front and the back to join them together and then we're going to insert the zipper at the front So that's the back, two pieces joined together and here's the front, so the two pieces are joined together at the crotch. Now we're just going to put the zipper along the center front seam, I will press the seam open with my fingers. Put our zipper face down and we're just going to sew around it. I pulled the zipper pull out of the way just to make it easier sometimes like the zip I'm using the zipper pull is quite big and it's hard to sew around it so you sew down one side and I'm going to pull the zipper pull back up to close the zipper you lift your presser foot up for this turn around Carefully go over your zipper. I do this by hand actually. And then you turn around and sew down the other side. Once again, pulling the zipper pull out of the way. Okay, and now I'm just going to open it up with a seam ripper. Just remove the stitches over the zipper. Right next, we'll focus on our darts. There are two in front and two at the back. Simply pinch the notches together and pin. Make sure your pin goes through both sides the the lines i drew you should always make sure your pin goes through both sides so that it's aligned properly Once I have everything pinned, I'm going to sew the darts down and then I am going to sew the pants together from the sides. So you want to sew your trousers on the sides all the way down the legs and then you're going to sew the inseam all the way down the legs. For the darts, just start at the widest edge and sew down to the narrow point. Do not backstitch or back tack. At the sides, you have a notch at the hip line, you have another notch at the knee line. So you're going to pin out the notches first to make sure everything is aligned. And then you should put some pins in between. Once everything is pinned down, go ahead and sew. Always be conscious, uh, cautious of the. Did I say cautious? <laughs> be conscious of the seam allowance you chose. If you use the one-inch seam allowance, sew at one inch. 
I used a half inch seam allowance, so I'm sewing at half an inch. This is so satisfying, I don't know why. <laughs> so you're going to sew down both sides and then you're going to do the crotch seam, match the seams at the center of the crotch first, then you can pin down the leg. There is a notch at the knee, pin that first. Now at this point, you might need to ease in the back inseam just a little, just a little. So when you're sewing, you're going to just pull on the fabric slightly to get everything aligned. I think between the center crotch seam and the knee, you're going to have to ease the back seam just a little. So here I'm starting from the foot or the hem of one leg actually, and I'm just going to sew up all the way. So once I get past the knee, I'm going to pull on the fabric slightly just to make sure the back gets eased in. I'm holding it firm and then you sew all the way to the crotch, to the center. And then you sew down, straight down to the other leg and to the hem. Right, now you have your trousers completely assembled. It is time to press. I stay stitched the waist and the hemline. And now I'm going to turn it right sides out. Now we're going to set the crease. You are going to fold at the dart line of the front because that's where the crease of the front is. This will help you if you fold there. Your uh, trousers will fold to the sides and to help you keep things straight, fold the other pant leg, or sorry, I keep on saying pants, but trouser leg on top. So match your two, your out seam and your in seam. You see, I'm matching them when I'm folding and now you can just press. You can see everything is straight and aligned. So you start with the leg that is underneath. So we're just setting in our creases now. Iron around the leg to the back, iron around the leg to the front, and just open up all your seams. I forgot to mention before I did this, I, I ironed on the inside. So I ironed the seams open on the inside before I did this, just to make things more crisp. So you should do that. Iron your seams open on the inside first before you set your creases. So now that we've done the inside leg, we'll do the outer leg. So the same thing, you make sure your out seam and your in seam align on top of each other. That will make sure that your trouser is actually facing the right direction. Now for the hip, the hip has a slight curve. So I don't actually iron on it flat. I am actually just steaming over it. Unless you have a maybe Taylor's ham or something that you can put underneath. See, I'm just steaming over that hip area because it's curved. You do the inner leg too. And I'm closing my zipper. I'm steaming over it. I'm not pressing on it. Okay, we are done. And this is what our pants are looking at. You can try them and see how they fit and you can make adjustments accordingly. So for the adjustments, let's move on to this next clip. Fine, for the pants, the overall length of the pants is the issue. So I advise you pick by your crotch depth first. There's a link to a measurement guide so that you see the measurement I'm talking about, which is it's called your rise or your seats. So that's from your waist to this crotch line. Pick by that, look at your size key, use that to pick your measurements. For your size so for instance my dress form falls into a size 14 so this is a 14 line 14 goes from here 14 to here all the sizes end at the same line so it's easy to find so she's a 14 but her waist is an 18 
her waist and her hip actually fall at 18. So all I have to do is go from the size 14 and extend that waistline on both sides. So from 14 line, I will extend it with a line to the 18 line on this side. Following the natural curve of the waist, I will extend it with a line from 14 to the 18 line on that side. And then I will simply trace from the 18 line all the way down. And that's it, because essentially all I've done is shorten the crotch depth. Don't worry about the hip depth. Once you've shortened the crotch depth, the hip depth has also been shortened. And following down, let's roll down. I will trace all the way following the 18 leg, since that is what I have widened the trouser to. But when I get here, I will stop on the 14 length because essentially I choose a size 14 for my length. So with the pants, pick by your vertical measurement, pick by your length because that's so much easier. Once you've picked by your length, you can widen the trouser or make the trouser narrower. So when I, get, I trace all the way with the 18 line, uh, as I get to the 14 line, I'll stop there. So it's the same thing both ways. If I had picked an 18 overall for my crotch depth, but I felt I was slimmer and my waist and my hip and my waist and hip and everything are narrower, I would shrink down my 18 waist. So this is my 14 line. I retrace it up to 18 as now my waist, the same thing on this side. I'll take my 14, shrink down the waist to this side. Sorry, you square up, not don't bend the ruler, square up, mark the new points, and from there I retrace using the size 14 lines all the way to the end. But when I get to the hem, I will stop at size 18 length. So you pick by your length because it's so much easier. And remember, depending on the length you choose, so if I chose a 14, when I come to the knee, I'll trace the notch of the 14. So the notch of the 14 is here. I would trace it to the 18 line because that's where my new width is. The same thing here. I'll trace the 14 to the 18 line and mark my new notch. So that's the simplest way to adjust your pants. You don't have to do much beyond that. You do the same for the back. At the back, we have exactly the same scenario, but just remember this is your hip line. I just need to know the notch on this side and on this side so it's like this so this is the crotch depth of the back so from the 14 line at the waist you're going to adjust from 14 to the 18 mark on the other side you're going to adjust from 14 to the 18 mark so now i have shortened my length and now I'm simply going to trace down the 18 line all the way down to the hem. Same thing all the way down to the hem. And in the same fashion, when I get to the hem line, I'm going to stop at the 14 line. So you're going to find the 14 line because that's our length and we'll stop all the way down. So the same thing. So you trace all that. Remember when you're tracing, trace your grain line or crease line actually on both patterns so that you can see it then when it comes to marking your notches remember the same thing at the knee you find the 14 line and extend it to the 18 side because now you're using 18 and that's what you do you just extend it on both sides to mark your notches there here is already extended. You already have your 18 notch here. You can use that. And so that is all. You just use size 14 overall. And the same for the darts on the front and at the back. Since you shortened it by 14, you look for the mark for the 14 darts. Just put a stroke there. And remember to join your darts when you're tracing. You go from 14 to 14, 14 to 14 for your darts. Do the same on the front. So that's the easiest way to adjust the trousers because you don't want to touch too many things. Just adjust it like that. All right. And remember, if you have any problems with adjustments, pick the biggest size. So if I'm between a 
14 and an 18. In this case, let me put it this way. If you're between a 14 and an 18, pick the 18. Because it's easier to shrink something down when you wear it. Now, there's another alternative. I can cut out the 18 because my waist and hip fall into 18. Cut out the 18 and then we're going to actually chop up the pattern. I'll quickly show you how to do that. So let's just do this quickly. Let's say you now cut out one size. You cut out a size 18 also like this. And I want to just shorten the crotch depth. The crotch depth being from here to here. So if I just square across. Sorry. The crotch depth being from here to here. If I want to shorten it, I'm simply going to use the hip line that is already available. So I will take my hip line and cut right at that hip line. And if I want to shorten it, I will overlap. I will overlap the pattern so it is as short as I want. Stick it down and then you blend the curves. So now you've shortened the whole pattern. You make that very simple. You shorten it at that point. If you want to um, shorten the overall length, just do it at the base of the trouser. If I want to take it up, I draw in a new hemline and that is going to be my hemline at that point. I've shortened it. So you can shorten right at the hemline and then you're done. Also, in the same vein, you can extend. Once again, you cut at the original line. And now you can extend. You take a sheet of paper, put it in between. What I like to do, you draw a line on the paper first. This will be your green line. Place one piece here, matching the green line. Place the other piece, matching the green line. So you see, I've extended it by whatever amount, maybe half an inch, one eighth of an inch, one centimeter, it doesn't matter. Once you've done that, you can stick it down in place and blend the sides blend the sides so you've extended it so that's just straightforward you can make it longer you can make shorter in the same vein you can add more length just at the bottom if you want remember if you've extended here you've affected the overall length so you can add here if you want and blend this down now strictly speaking if you shorten the front you must shorten the back if you extend the back, you must extend the front. They need to match. The same at the length. If you make it longer, it must be longer at, at the front and the back at the same time. So those are the most straightforward corrections. Try it. If you have any problems, leave a comment below and I will be sure to get back to you. Thank you for watching. I'm Kaine. I make pattern drafting videos. You can see more tutorials on the website. Feel free to ask questions or leave me comments and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.